it's Jess here with Watch Jess. Thank you so much for watching. I am very sorry it's been a while since I've done a video. It feels like anyway. And I don't know which order you're seeing this, so maybe you guys have seen one sooner than this. Anyway, it's been a long time since I filmed a video because everyone's at home. Things are kind of crazy and loud in there. I haven't been able to do a sit down video. So I decided today to get ready and to come to sit in my car and film some videos so that I can get some content out for you guys. However, I didn't time it great and it's raining. So I hope it's not terrible sound and you can hear me okay. But I'm here to do a very much requested video and one that I meant to do three months ago. And that is Baby Mark's birth story. So I do have a video of his like birth vlog. I have a vlog of the day. And I went back and watched it just to refresh my memory. <laughs> so I hope I get all the details right. If you want specific like details, you can go watch that. This is more like an overview. And there's some stuff we didn't show in the vlog just because it got kind of crazy at the end. So I wanted to do a sit down video. I also have Nate's birth vlog. I mean, not birth vlog. We weren't doing YouTube though. Nate's birth story and Lucy's birth story. I will link them down below so you guys can go see how their births differ. I will say Baby Marks was probably the most scary, roughest kind of. Um, and you'll kind of hear that line in a minute. So I hope you'll hang out with me in here about Baby Mark's birth story. Like I said, I meant to film this. He's three months old. He's three months old this week. And I sat down to film this story when he was just a couple days old and my camera wasn't working. I couldn't get it to work and then I lost that time. <laughs> it went by because I couldn't get my camera to work and then it was like the batteries were all dead. And so then it just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and now he's three months old. But anyway, it's better to do it now than wait any longer. So I want to get into his birth story. Little, I can't believe how big he is, you guys. So a lot of you know, if you're following my pregnancy, that um, I had a condition with my other two, or with my other child, my last baby, my little Lucy Kate. Go back and watch her birth story for a more detailed explanation of all this. But I had a condition with her called ICP, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. And it's a very high chance you can have it in subsequent pregnancies. So I was monitored for it all throughout Mark's pregnancy. And um, I never was officially diagnosed with it, but my numbers just started increasing. Um, they increased a little bit and so I had to see a high risk OB for one time, one appointment in his pregnancy just to kind of get checked out by them. And so she said, I'm okay with you being pregnant um, past 37 weeks, but I don't want you to go any longer than 39 weeks pregnant because after that the risks go up. Go watch Lucy's video for more detailed explanation of all that. But um, when you have ICP, they want you to have the baby by 37 weeks. They'll induce you. Um, but because I wasn't ever diagnosed, she was okay with me going to 39 weeks, but not any later just because the risks go up from there. I hope you guys can see me okay. I'm, I'm having to hold the camera. So um, it, I, I kept thinking, well, maybe I'll just go into labor on my own. I won't have to go to 37 nine weeks because <laughs> I was having a lot of Braxton Hicks. It was my third baby. I was feeling a lot of pressure and he didn't want to come out. He, he was happy in there. He was, he was happy and safe. Um, my mom was here during that time and every night we kept thinking, well, maybe tonight's the night, you know? So, uh, I was having a lot of pain with other things. I, maybe I'll do a whole thing on that, but I was having a lot of, um, actually what I have is like varicose veins and stuff. And it was just really, really painful. So I was pretty much, the doctor had put me on not bed rest, but she had said, I want you to lay down as much as you can and just rest. So I had done that for weeks, probably months at this point. And so I was so ready for him to be born. I just felt so big and uncomfortable. And so we went into the doctor for my last checkup before I turned 39 weeks. And she was like, well, let's schedule your induction. And so she gave me a couple choices and I chose to induce right on that 39 week milestone of that day. So my midwife, the one I had seen, I had seen several OBs throughout my, with my practice and midwives. And I actually love the midwives more than the OBs. They were all great though. So my uh, midwife that I really, really liked the most, 
she wasn't going to be on call for the next week because she was going to be on vacation. So I was going to be with my next choice, which was the other midwife. And so they went ahead and scheduled me with her and said that, of course, the OBs would be monitoring me too. And that she wanted me to come in the night before induction, which I had never done before. With Lucy, I was induced as well. But I came in that morning, they started Pitocin, and I was induced. So they wanted to kind of get me a head start uh, at this hospital with this doctor group. So they told me to get at the hospital at 10 o'clock at night and that they would start the process of, of induction and that he would be born the next day. So we were so excited. The last few days were just a bunch of, you know, excitement and trying to get everything ready and everything. The night came where we had to be at the hospital at 10 o'clock at night. And I remember all day just being like so anxious. And Nate actually was home from school because he wasn't feeling well. You can see in the birth vlog that I'm really concerned about Nate. And I was, I was really upset to leave him that night because he just wasn't feeling good. And, um, I just was nervous that he was going to need me and I wasn't going to be there. So I was really worried about him. But anyway, we went into the doctor. We went into the hospital, me and David, at 10 o'clock at night. They told me the plan was they were going to start Cytotec, which is a pill you take by mouth. And um, it stimulates your uterus to have contractions. And it can also, I think, supposed to soften your cervix. Anyway, um, so we got to the hospital, got checked in, got my IV started, and by the time, so we got there at 10, by the time they actually gave me the medicine, I believe it was close to midnight, because, you know, they have to input all the questions they ask you, um, they had to do my IV, they had to get, it, you know, just all the little things they had to do, <laughs> they had to, like, run some fluids and stuff, so by the time I actually took the Cytotec medicine, it was almost midnight, and she, the nurse, I had the best nurses, y'all. The nurse told me, you're going to take this now, and then we'll take it again in four hours, so that we can, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. And after that, we'll probably start you on Pitocin, break your water, and get it really going. So, um, she checked me when I got there, when, and she, I hadn't progressed any further than at the doctor's office, which I believe she said was like two and a half, almost three centimeters. So that's what I was at the doctor a few days before, and that's what I was when I got there at the, um, hospital. And y'all, I do not remember this with the other two. I don't think it was painful for when they checked me with the other two kids. It was not painful at all. Um, yeah, with this one, I don't know what it was. It was very painful when they checked my cervix to see how dilated I was. It was probably worse than the labor that was to come. It was super uncomfortable. And I remember just feeling like, oh my gosh, like I cannot, like that can't happen again. <laughs> that hurts too much. Um, so I was not happy when they had to check me every so often because it really hurt for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, so anyway, she came in, she gave me the side attack and she told me just to rest. They had let me have some ginger ale. As long as I um, hadn't had my epidural yet, I could go ahead and drink clear liquids. She said I could have popsicles and stuff like that. All I wanted was some ginger ale. So she brought me that, sipped on that. She told me to rest as much as I could. I believe we tried to rest, but, um, I, I was all hooked up, you know, they hook up the baby to the heart monitor and everything. So, um, he kept moving around so much that he would kept coming off of the monitor. So she would have to, all the alarms would go off and she would have to come in and find him again. And that happened like every few minutes. So I didn't get to sleep at all. I had been up the last few nights, just not being able to sleep. So I was really tired going into this really, really tired. So anyway, um, it came to about one thirty, and I had been having, like, I could feel the contractions kind of there, you know, a little bit here and there, but at one thirty, I remember going, holy cow, yeah, I'm feeling stuff. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Whatever the side attack is, is working. So I started really hurting and, um, I, you can see in the video when I update you guys in the middle of the night that my face has totally changed. I now look like I've been crying. It's really swollen and red. And I had been because it was starting to get really, really uncomfortable. My body responded really well to the Cytotec. I was having contractions just every few minutes and they were lasting like two minutes long. And I'm talking really hard contractions. And um, at some point after that, like two, three o'clock in the morning, 
the nurse came in and she said, I told her, I said, I'm hurting. And I'd already told her, I went into this. I want the epidural. <laughs> I've already given birth twice. I have felt contractions. I want my epidural and I don't want to try to do this naturally. Like I really love the epidural. So, um, she came in and she said, okay, I think she checked me again. I can't remember what I was like closer to four or five, maybe, um, after a few hours of the side attack and I was really hurting. And, um, she said, okay, we can give you some IV medicine to kind of help with the pain, or we can go ahead and get the epidural. But if you want the epidural, I need to go ahead and start fluids, and we need to call the doctor and just get the okay from them to get let you have the epidural. But she told me, she said, don't wait too long till you're like at the point of desperately needing it because it's going to take a good hour from when you say I want it till actually you can get it. She was so nice. And I kept saying, I don't know what to do. Like, I didn't want to get it too early. I was really worried it was going to get too early or um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I was worried about, but. I just, I felt like, well, maybe I should just wait a little bit longer. And David was like, he could tell it was really hurting. He's like, just get something, dude. <laughs> Try something. And I had never had the medicine by IV. It was called Stadol. I had never had that before. So I was like, I don't know if I really want to feel like medicated feeling. I feel like I have smears all over my face. Uh, maybe that's a shadow. So at, I waited like a little bit after she told me I could have something. And then finally I called her on the button. I said, okay, I'm ready for some pain medicine. And so she's like, well, what do, what do you want to try? And I said, well, let's try the state all. And so she's like, okay. And so she came back in. And this was closer to probably 4 a.m., 3.30 or 4 a.m. And um, I was really hurting. I remember her drawing it up and me being like, please, Jesus, let this start helping. And she had told me that um, at that point I was dilating well, but he was still really high up. Like he was just not moving down. And so, um, she gave me the medicine and she told me, she said, you're going to feel really spacey on this. You're going to feel like really kind of high. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And I did, it started working really fast. And I will say I liked, I, it helped, it helped. Um, I still felt the contractions, but I did not care as much of them. I did feel kind of spacey and it let me rest a little bit. I don't think I ever like fell asleep into a deep sleep or anything, but I definitely was able to kind of doze off here and there and it helped push me through so I could get the epidural. So I really liked the state all. It made me feel a little loopy, but I was welcoming <laughs> at that point. And they said it was safe for the baby and they were monitoring him and everything. So his heart rate at this point looked great. Everything with him looked great. And, um, about an hour and a half after I got that medicine, it started wearing off where I was hurting again. And this was about 5 a.m. And I told the nurse, I, she came in to check me again. And I told her, I said, okay, you told me it could, you know, take an hour to get the epidural. I just want to go ahead and say I want it. And she said, okay. I mean, they were so great, like letting you kind of determine when you were ready for things and um, not pushing it on you, but letting you kind of lead the way with it. And so she said, okay, let me get everything going. She started me on more fluids. Like I had to have so many, much more before it could they could give it to me, even though I was getting a little bit of fluids anyway. She ran the bag of fluids I needed. She got the anesthesiologist, um, like prepped everything for him and then called him. And she said, actually you and our next room over, which I think there was only, a, we have a small hospital. I think there was two of us in labor, um, at the same time. And so we were like neck and neck right there together. So she said, actually the other room wants the epidural too. So I don't know who he's going to come into first, but he can just get you both done while he's here. So around six o'clock he came in. I was actually the first one to go. And at this point I wasn't screaming in pain, but it was getting really, really uncomfortable. So he came in and he was probably the most longest. It took forever for him to do it, but he was very, very thorough. He asked me a lot of questions. Um, they let David stay in the room. Actually, I got to kind of hold on to David while they were putting the epidural in, which in some of my, in, I think in Nate's birth, they made David leave. So I was glad David got to be in there and, and help me through it because he was very particular on how he wanted me. I mean, I've had epidurals before. And so I know that there, you have to arch your back and everything, but he was even more specific about, okay, no, it's not, you know, no, this is it. Move this way, move that way. So 
it kind of, it kind of was hard while I was having contractions to do it, but I so wanted the epidural to be good that I would just do anything he said. <laughs> and he was really, really nice. So, uh, they got the epidural in and at this point, um, I think I was still like five centimeters something. I don't know the exact number, but I was still not like eight or anything. I, it's, you know, um, but I was, I was progressing, but it's just kind of slow and the baby was still really high up. So I got the epidural and I was so nervous that the epidural wasn't going to take right or that, because with Lucy, with my last, pre my last pregnancy and delivery, I had an epidural come out and just not work. <laughs> like it came out of my back and I had to have a second epidural and I didn't want that to happen again. So I was just really nervous about it, but it turned out to be a really good epidural. I felt really great. And, um, I don't know what that noise was. My camera was going crazy. Anyway, so, um, they, uh, let me kind of just lay and let the epidural take effect and rest a little bit. I don't think I ever fell asleep, but I kind of rested around this time. A uh, family started getting there because they had taken, my mom and dad had taken the kids to school. Nate was feeling better. He was fine. Um, so they took them to school. Uh, my in-laws were in town, so they came up early that morning too. And I was just kind of hanging out and waiting and, at some point after the epidural, they checked me and I was eight. I want to say this was like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm sorry for my phone going off. They checked me and I was like eight centimeters. And so I thought, oh my gosh, we're going to have this baby soon. Like eight centimeters. And then midwife came in and she's like, I'm going to break your water. And I thought, oh my gosh. Like, actually, they told me they were going to break my water before I had the epidural. That's really what pushed me to get the epidural. I forgot to mention that. So I was like, before you break my water, I want the epidural because <laughs> I know that can really push it. So after they broke my water and everything, I got to like eight centimeters. And this was like, I want to say it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock-ish, something like that in the morning. So me and David are like, we're going to have this baby by noon. Like surely it's sometime this morning it's going to happen. But he still was not moving down. Like he was still really high up. And uh, the one of the nurses said that she could fill his head, but it was really big. <laughs> it was still really high. And that's not what I wanted to hear. And so... Um, at some point they started worrying about his heart D cells, like his heart rate was going down and it was taking a while to come back up. And, um, they kept repositioning me, which I know, like, I know that I mean, you know, that they get really worried. They were trying, the nurses were really cool and calm and collected, but they kept repositioning me on my like a uh, side and they would roll me to the other side. And if he had D cells, they would try to change my position and it would come back up. So I was dealing with that and I was kind of getting a little nervous about it. Um, and every time they checked me, it was just really high up. And even when I got to be at one point, like I want to say this was 10, 11 in the morning, I got to a 10. I was fully ready to go. And the midwife came in and she had me push a couple times and she's like, he's too high. You're just going to wear yourself out. He's too high. He's not going to come. Like you just, you got to, you got to labor some more. He's got to move down. So that's when I tried even more positioning. They put me in stirrups to kind of like help. Like I was kind of turned and then had my legs in stirrups like on my side to kind of help him move down the canal. <laughs> and um, finally, after that, the nurse, the nurses came in. It was probably close to, to noon at this point. And they were like, we are going to do some techniques to try to help him move down. Y'all, this was the hardest thing I've ever been through in any of my most exhausting. I'll say the most exhausting thing I've ever been through in my <laughs> pregnancy deliveries. Um, they had me in stirrups and pulling on towels. Like they were playing tug of war with me and I would push and pull on a towel. And it was it exhausting. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. Exhausting. It was horrendous. I mean, I was worn out. And we probably did this for a good 45 minutes to an hour where every contraction, I would pull on this towel and push at the same time to try to get him to move down. Because the nurses, my midwife was really calm about everything, but the nurses were starting to get worried because the baby's heart rate kept going down and he wasn't moving down. And so they were really trying to get him to come down. Well, at first I played tug of war with this other nurse and then she got tired and I went to another nurse and she got tired and then David's like, I can do it. And so then I'm playing tug of war with David and I am pushing with all of my might. Y'all, because of this that I'm describing right now, I was, my abs were so sore days later. It took a good week for me not to be hurting my abs from that pushing. It was 
horrible. I don't recommend the tug of war thing. It did not work. And all it did was completely exhaust me. Like completely. I don't think it helped him move down at all, at all, at all. And so finally, I was just worn out. Y'all, I can't even tell you how worn out that was. It was more intense than just pushing because I was also pulling on this towel. And I was really worried about him at this point. So I was really pushing to try to get him to come down. We didn't vlog any of this because, like, even talk to you guys about it just because it all happened so fast. So, anyway, finally they were like, okay, this isn't working. I'm like, praise God, I cannot do it anymore. And they decided to bring out the peanut ball. And if you guys have seen, they look like a, it looks like a huge peanut. It's like an inflatable ball that looks like a huge peanut. And your legs go into the center, like where the peanut dips down. And they had me on my side with the peanut. And I remember just being so scared for Mark because at this point, I heard the whispers of them thinking that there was a cord around his neck. Now, Nate also had a cord around his neck, and um, I know lots of babies do. Like, it's all free-floating in there, so the cord can easily go around their neck. It's usually not a problem, but it can make it hard for them to come down the canal, and it, as it's squeezing on the baby, it makes their heart do cell and everything. So I was starting to get really worried, and I remember just, like, really focusing, trying to pray that God would just guide us through this delivery in that I would be able to have him naturally and that he would be okay and everything. And um, family came in and out to check on us, but it was very like calm in the room. Um, I remember just sitting on this, laying on this peanut ball positioner and just really praying that it would be able to work soon. This was afternoon. This was like after this probably like one o'clock or so. So they had told me if you feel pressure, like he's you know, crowning, like pressure, like, right, he's right there. Let us know. And I know exactly what that feels like because I had the same thing with the other two where I had to call the nurse, like, oh, I think he's right there. Like I can fill his head. So, um, it got to a point with me on this peanut thing that I was like, I think I feel like a lot of pressure down there. Like maybe it's just me and my imagination, but I feel like he has moved down. And so the sweetest nurse, you guys can see her, um, in the birth vlog. She's the one that she was a charge nurse, but she also was the baby nurse that day. So she, uh, was in charge of Mark during the delivery. Uh, but she came in to check on me cause the, I guess my nurse had gone to lunch or something. And so I told her, I said, it may be my imagination, but I think that he's, he's moved down. And so she goes, okay. And so she checked me and she goes, yes. And so she goes, let's do one practice push and, um, let's see if he is, you know, going to, it's time. And so I pushed and she said, whoa, <laughs> stop pushing. Don't do it in. Like he's about to come. So she called my midwife who my, our doctor's appointment, our doctor's office is just right by the hospital. So that, that midwife, I'm telling y'all, she was over here in like two minutes. She must have dropped everything and ran over because she said she was right in the middle of a patient <laughs> and she got the call. So she comes over and of course, you know, they're setting up the, um, the delivery room and everything and making sure every, the warmers turned on and all this. And, um, the midwife comes in and she's like, okay, let's do it. And I pushed two contractions maybe. And he was born. And when he was born, they told me he had the cord around his neck two times. It was a double cord, nuchal cord. And so that's why he couldn't move down as well um, because that cord was wrapped around his neck twice. I'm so thankful that God protected him. He was born so beautifully. Um, he came out crying and he was a little purplish at first, uh, but he was perfect and lovely. And it was a great experience when he came out. They put him right on me. Um, with Lucy, with my last one, they had taken her it's pretty much after, right after she was born because they were worried about her breathing. So it was nice to be able to have him right on me. Um, they asked permission to take him after a little while and uh, do his all, all of his newborn assessment and everything and wrap him up really good. And they um, stitched me back up because I did have I tore a little bit, kind of the same place as I tore with the other two, maybe TMI, but this is a birth story. And so my midwife was so sweet. Like she hugged me when she left and she told me how great I did. And, um, the nurses were like, y'all, you scared me. <laughs> this baby scared me so bad. Um, but they were just so professional and so lovely. Great, great hospital and, and team and everything. Um, 
but oh man, that was that was a scary moment until he was actually born. And then um, even while I was pushing, they were like, "Oh, his heart his heart rate is you know dropping a little bit." And um, the midwife is like, "Look, he's right here. <laughs> he's about to come out. Just hold on one second. And it was like two, like literally like two contractions worth of pushes, and he was out. So. Um, that part was easy. The pushing him out was easy. That tug of war pushing, that was intense. Has anybody else had that? Because I had never had that before and it was hard work. It was full on hard work. So anyway, the baby was born. You guys can see all this in the birth vlog. They cleaned him up and they put him back on me. And they all, as soon as I was cleaned up and they made sure like I, I was okay, and he was okay, they all left the room. And it was the most wonderful experience. Um, they left the room for like two hours. And me and David just got to be there and hold Mark and look at him and be so thankful for him. I've never had that long with him. I know it was probably hard on family to wait. Um, and I couldn't even ask family to come in. I could have if I wanted to, but I wasn't like I wasn't cleaned up as far as like a new gown. I didn't want people to come in like my gown hanging off as all bloody and everything. But it was just so nice to be able to have that time with Mark. I will remember it forever because of how special it was. And he was just looking at us. And then we breastfed for a while. And he did so great with that. And I just remember holding him. And it was probably over an hour before David held him. But we were just so in love with him. And then David held him. And we kept thinking like, I wonder when they're going to come take us to get us to our room. But we didn't really want the time to be over either because it was just so nice. I forgot to say he was born at two o'clock PM on the dot. So, um, he was definitely not b born before noon. Like we thought <laughs> he made us wait a little bit longer, but 2 PM on the dot, he was born. And, um, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience, even with all the stuff that was scary. Uh, he was totally worth every bit of it. And um, it was just, it was, it was awesome. But after about two hours, they came and got me cleaned up in a new gown and everything and um, got us to another room and we were able to see some family and the kids. Uh, we saw them later that night, David, uh, David. David was me, with me the whole time, but my mom and dad brought the kids up to meet him, and it was just, it was everything I wanted it to be, and I'm so thankful to have a happy, healthy baby and a great experience um, in labor and delivery, and it's it's something I will remember forever. I love going back and like reliving these birth vlogs because, and uh, birth stories because I really want to remember them forever. It's such a magical miracle moment when a baby is born and you hear that cry and it's just, it's just, it's just magical. So that is baby Mark's birth story. He weighed eight pounds, five ounces. He was, I'm a terrible mother who doesn't remember how long he was. I want to say he was 21 inches long and, um, he was perfect. He was absolutely perfect when he was born. No problems. Um, when she, when she was about to weigh him, she goes, I'm guessing over nine pounds. That's what the nurse said. She's like, definitely over nine pounds. And he was only eight five, but he just was kind of, he just looked like a bigger baby, but he definitely was my biggest baby. Nate was eight pounds even, and Lucy was six pounds, 14 ounces. So he was my biggest, but, um, still not, he wasn't like 10 pounds or anything, which is what I was worried about. <laughs> so the only reason, cause they were worried when he wouldn't come down that he was really big. Um, but it wasn't. It was the fact that the cord was around his neck. So, whew, yeah, that was intense. But apparently the cord being around your neck is a very common occurrence. The midwife was like super chill about it. Like that midwife, I really, really liked her because she was so calming. Like, oh yeah, he had a cord around his neck. Like, oh, it was, it was fine. Like she was so calming. It's really common. That's what she kept saying. It's really common and it is really common. Um, but as a mom, <laughs> it can be really scary. I mean, it can be, it can be bad. It can be bad, but I'm so thankful that everything went well and that he's here and he's healthy and definitely go watch the birth vlog. I will leave that link down below. That'll give you kind of more of a exact how everything went, but we didn't show or talk about a lot of this. So I wanted to tell you guys exactly what happened and 
tell y'all that tug of war stuff was really, really rough on me. <laughs> it was really rough. The, the few days after we got home from the hospital, I could not figure out why I was so sore. Like my whole stomach, it felt like it, it just hurt so bad. And, um, realized after thinking about it, that it was that it was the tug of war stuff that killed my abs, but all in good calls to try to move them down. So thank y'all for listening to this. I hope it made sense. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Please, please, please subscribe if you're new. We would love to have you a part of our YouTube family and we'll see you all later. Bye.